We're going to continue the teaching we started a few weeks back, the truth. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's very clear. No man comes to the Father but by Jesus. So he is the way. There's no other way. Man has come up with all sorts of ways, but there is no other way. He is the only way. If you want truth, go to Jesus. He is the truth. There are facts out there according to the world, to the natural way of thinking, but facts must change and line up to the truth of God's word. Amen. And there's no life apart from Jesus. And it's talking about spiritual life, but how many of you know that your natural life was not something that man created? And it says you are wonderfully formed in your mother's womb. God did that. God put your parts together. He did it. So Jesus, when you say Jesus, you can think truth, the way, the life. The reason for this study is to see why we need Jesus. It's easy for us to say to somebody, you must be born again because your spirit's dead. You inherited from Adam. But how did that happen? Why does somebody need to be born again? And why do our works and good behavior not help us get to that place? We have to also understand when we get born again, it's our spirit only that becomes brand new. We get a brand new spirit. So that's been the purpose of this study. So we, in Ephesians, we had seen, and this is just a quick review, it's not of works lest any man should boast. It's not of anything we've done, for we're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So he has good works for us, but our spirit was created in Christ Jesus. We are in Christ. Amen. We are in Christ. We are new creatures in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. But sometimes we don't realize that I can say that all I want and become very religious about it, but that doesn't help my soul realm. It doesn't help in my walk today. So we have to understand the difference. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, we saw that the natural man does not receive the things of God, and we can see that out there. People do not want to receive what God has to say. They don't want to believe that Jesus is the only way. Unfortunate, through wrong teaching, through religion, there are people that say they're Christians that really think naturally and they're bound by religion. I'm not saying they're not born again. But a Christian can be bound by religion, by works. And when we see somebody that's not walking where we're walking, we often like to condemn, like the Pharisee condemned the publican who bared his heart because he knew he was unworthy. So that's the way the natural man thinks. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Man, natural thinking, thinks soul and body. But God said, you are a spirit. God is a spirit. God is the father of spirits. John 3, 1 to 7. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. So Jesus was showing the fact that he was from God by the miracles. 
We should, Jesus said, the same works that I do shall ye do also. People should know we're from Jesus by the works that we do. And I believe that's where we're going. We have to have that even more so in this end time. We are to be witnesses. We're to do the greater works, the works of Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Must be born again. We're back to that telling people to be born again. And that's part of what we're studying. Because out there, we have to be able to answer people. Why do you need to be born again? We have to explain that in a way that they understand. Next verse. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, that's the natural birth, that's the water that surrounds you in the womb, and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Your natural body is what? Ninety some percent water? I don't know. It doesn't matter. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit, and we must remember that. It is different. We're not ruled by the flesh. The flesh there really means your carnal five senses. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. So we saw the reason we were born in sin, not because of an adulterous uh, affair of a parent, but because we're of the seed of Adam. Everything produces after its own kind. So Adam's produced after his own kind, and that's a human being with a dead spirit, dead to God, alive to him. You do have a spirit before you're born again, but it's alive to Satan. It's dead to God. And unless you be born again and make Jesus Lord of your life, you will not go to heaven. Plus, you'll live a miserable life now. God wants us to live abundant life now. We saw in Ezekiel that God said, I'll take out the stony heart. That's the heart you were born with of the flesh. That's the heart that's cold to God. Doesn't have the life of God in it. The spirit doesn't have the life of God in it. When you're born of the flesh, when you come out of the womb, and when you reach a certain age, your heart does not have the life, your spirit does not have the life of God in it. And God is the creator of all life. Which is why you, and I'm way ahead of myself, but that's all right. Which is why good works will not get you to heaven. Good works will not get you healed or prosperous. All life comes from God. Next verse, where are we on? I'm, what verse was I reading? Oh, Ezekiel. So he takes out that stony heart that does not have any life in it. Your heart, before you become a Christian, has death in it. Talking about the spirit man. And of course, your thinking isn't any better. So it says, God said, I will take that out, that dead, stony spirit, and put in a brand new heart of flesh or a spirit that's alive to God. That's where you become a new creature in Christ. You cannot make your dead spirit alive through good works. Because as I said, God's a creator of all life. So in Genesis 1.1, we have to accept this fact. Out there in the natural thinking, people don't want to accept this fact. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. God was in the beginning. Everything starts from God. He was, always was, always will be. Who created him? He's God. There's questions we ask that the Bible doesn't tell us, and we shouldn't spend our time trying to figure out what the Word of God does not reveal to us. 
because we come up with sideways ideas, natural ideas, and we make a religion out of it. In the beginning, God. That ends it. And he created the heaven and the earth. It did not evolve. He created it. And often man tries to, okay, I believe that, but now we try and make rules or we try and figure out theories, which apparently a theory is just a theory and isn't proven. We try and figure these things out and we try and put God in this box to make him match what the world is saying. And it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Because when we do, we stop the flow of the Holy Spirit in our life. It says the hidden things are meant for God. What he's revealed is for us. If it's not revealed in the word, it's none of our business. Amen. End of story. Amen. Why did this person do that? Why did that person do that? Why did that person die young? Why did this person... On and on and on. It's none of my business. It's none of your business unless Holy Spirit reveals it to you for the purpose of ministering to that person and helping them. Otherwise, we start assuming, and we have no right. So back to this. In the verses all the way through Genesis chapter 1, everything was made by, and God said, and God said, and God said. So it's his word. The power's in his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Everything. Everything was under Adam's authority. Everything, except God. Amen. And too often we try and make ourselves God. Everything. We sit... And, and I've heard so much of this. We sit in judgment. We say God's judging this and God's judging that simply because we would like to judge it. We figure, well, God, you better judge these people. And you better just wipe them out. Maybe, God, you should plan for that person to be assassinated. That's not a bad idea. Judgment, God, judgment. And Jesus said... All judgments been drawn unto me. And I didn't come to judge. Why are we judging? And why are we saying God's going to judge when he's, everything's been judged through Jesus until, until the rapture of the church? That which is holding back the Antichrist, that which is holding back judgment, is the church, the body of Christ. And we're to pray for our leaders. Pray that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. Pray that laborers will grow across their path. That they will hear the truth. Yes, and God is not judging today. And you and I should not. I sometimes think, you know, God... Well, here's a great opportunity, God. I don't think this way anymore, but I would, there's a great opportunity, God. If you just had somebody stationed there, that would deal with these four people right now. And then it comes to my mind, God is long-suffering, and he would that none should perish. Make man. We have dominion. But something happened. Something happened. Next verse. He created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him male and female. Next verse. And God blessed them. Here's the blessing. God spoke. He didn't just say, Adam, bless you, bless you, bless you. He spoke. He spoke and said, the blessing is be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that creeps on the earth. 
And I believe that's prophetic in it, that that's when Jesus got the blessing back for us, and that's what we have Amen. today. That's what we have today. So man had dominion. Man did not evolve. He was created. Amen. And everything God made was good, including man. He saw it was all good. We saw in Psalm 8 that God made man just a little lower than angels. If you have a King James, I don't know what other translations say. I knew the American Standard says, the, says God. King James says angels, but God made man just a little lower than himself. We are just, were made just a little lower than God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We fell to be under the angels, but when we get born again, we're back to just under God, Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let us never forget we're never above them. We're never above them. We are his children, but we're never above him. Amen. There is only one God, just one. Yeah. We are small G's, children of God, but there is one God. That's it. Doesn't matter what people say or who they might dream up or what name they might give them. There is one God only. And we are his children. But we're to honor him. As children honor their parents, we're to honor our heavenly father. Hallelujah. And that's why, as we said on Father's Day, fathers are so vital because they are the example of a heavenly father. That's what your children see. How you treat men, how you treat the rest of your family, your wife, is how people see God treating his children. Like I said, I think men have a hard job. Without Holy Spirit, you're sunk. It's too easy to get into the natural. Now, I can't say, well, as a man, et cetera, et cetera. But you fathers know. You know what kind of an example, how you treat your wife. Is she right after Jesus? You see, you're thinking, well, what's that got to do with this? Everything. Because you're made. We're all made in God's image. But as we saw last week, woman was taken out of man. That woman that was taken out of man was that nurturing part. The feminine part was taken out of man, which is why we saw there's no such thing today as a man saying, I should have been a woman because I'm more woman than man. No, if you've got the plumbing of a man, God created you, that's who you are. And if you are a woman, you don't have what the man has. Amen. And we're to honor and respect one another. We don't want to be the same because God didn't make man and woman the same. Do you know, he said, Adam doesn't have a helpmeet suitable. Do you know where else it shows helpmeet? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's our helpmeet. Your wife is your helpmate. And we're to treat her that way. We're to be walking in this dominion. We're to be walking in this dominion. But you need both of you to do it. So we saw that. Let's see, where are we going to go? We're just a little lower than the angels. Oh, glory. Um, so let's go to Genesis. In Genesis, this is a recap. Genesis 2, let's look at verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. At this point is where Holy Spirit went into man. He got a new spirit. This is where his spirit came from. Because as you read that, God took man and put him in the garden, made him of dust, breathed into his nostrils, breathed life. 
the spirit. He became a living soul, a speaking spirit like God. He got a spirit. When he, if you don't have a spirit, how do you get a brand new spirit? One way, from God. This is why we have to be born again. Okay. Did Adam do anything on his own to get this new spirit? Did Adam do anything to become a living soul? No. Do you think God's changed his mind that we can do a whole bunch of stuff to get something today from him, which he's already given us yeah. through Jesus? Okay. Next verse. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Next verse. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and for good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That tree, I believe, I think, that tree, and if any of you listen to the daily messages, you will have heard this, that tree is Jesus for us today. He's the life. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Next verse. And the Lord God took man, put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So obviously I look at it, if he put him in the garden, he was created outside the garden. But the good stuff was in the garden. Next verse. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Next. And of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day you eat it, thou shalt surely die. That was going to happen. In dying, you'll die. Adam physically did not die for a long time. But immediately, his spirit died. Immediately, his spirit died. Next. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will take, make him a help me. Next. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and fowl, and there was nothing for Adam. Next. Well, here, he gave names to everybody, but there was no help meet for him. Next. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof instead. Next. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man, male and female, put together. Next. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Woman was taken out of man. The woman, feminine part, was taken out of man. Man does not have feminine stuff. Amen. <laughs> you know, you hear somebody say, oh, well, she's just a woman. This is the way she is. Yeah. Look, without her, you wouldn't be complete. And without him, I wouldn't be complete. Amen. But he doesn't have what I have, and I don't have what he has. It was taken out of him. This is important. If somebody says, why do you, are you against all this trans stuff and homosexuality and lesbianism. This will tell you why. Amen. Because God, in the beginning, created it to be so. Amen. You know, our mind is an amazing thing. And if we meditate on something long enough, we will become what we meditate on. If we're told something long enough, we will begin to believe it. Anyway, she'll be called woman, taken out of man, next. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Your wife comes before your family. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. I want us to see, and I read that, Adam was given the instruction not to eat of the tree, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Eve was not. This is why I say, fathers, you have a big job to make sure the word in truth goes out in your home. 
not as something religious or a bunch of whatever. We're witnesses. And if you're not walking in that truth yourself, then, then we don't have anything to go by. So who told Eve the commandment of God? Adam. Adam. So now let's go, I think, Uh, so we saw that Satan was, we saw this last week, may, all ministering spirits, angels are ministering spirits. I, to what I see, Lucifer, Satan was in the garden, perfect as God made him. We read those scriptures. Romans 6.16, it says, whoever you listen to, you're their servant. Whoever you listen to, you're their servant. Adam listened to Satan, Lucifer at that time, and became his servant. That's where he lost. He gave his dominion and authority away. 2 Corinthians 4, when he did that, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Next. And the, no, I want to... Um, 2 Corinthians 3, no, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 5, please. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And it then tells us that it's lost, it's hidden to those, but it's a God of this world, Satan, who has blinded the eyes of those that believe not. When Adam listened to Satan, gave his dominion, it then made Satan God, little g, of the world. Not the earth, but the world system. The way the world operates. His kingdom rule. And he blinds people's eyes. You know, Jesus said, the doctrines and traditions of man make the word of God of no effect. Their eyes are blinded. So we see that God, at that time, Adam gave his authority to Satan. That's when Satan became God of this world system. God did not make Satan God of this world system. God made Satan an angel who was to minister to Adam. An angel. And he was under Adam's feet. Adam was just lower than God, so all created things, all created things were under. He had the dominion and authority and to subdue. We have that back, so there is nothing higher than us but God. Amen. And it's not our authority, it's Jesus' authority. And we're in him, so we're walking in his authority. Amen. Do you think Satan's going to look at Jesus and say, forget it, Jesus? I'm not going to listen to that. When we go in our own strength, Satan doesn't back off. But when we submit to what God is saying, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Submit, resist, he'll flee. But I'm not doing it in my own strength. I'm not doing it because <clears throat> I think I've been so good or I've read my Bible so much or I've confessed so much word. I'm doing it and I know he has to go because of what Jesus did to him. And God that back for me. And I do it in Christ, in Jesus, in his strength. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So now let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1. Now the serpent. So there has been a lot of, I don't know about a lot, but people are thinking serpent. And they figure it has to be a snake. And so the sages say, according to the sages and all of this, that at that time the snake walked upright and some suppose he could talk. I... 
I don't agree, but um, it says the serpent. And I'll give you a whole bunch of scriptures where every time it speaks of serpent, it's referring to Satan. And I believe Satan was more subtle, and we'll see scriptures on that, than any beast of the field. Did he speak through a snake? I don't know. Bible doesn't tell me. Now, if you've got a specific couple of scriptures that says snakes talk to Adam, okay. I don't see it. And if it was a serpent, a snake that walked up on its legs and could talk, I don't care. It was Satan doing the dirty work. It was Satan working through that serpent. But I believe he was still Lucifer there, and according, he was in the Garden of Eden, and he had all these stones, and I believe he, because in later scriptures I'll show you, he was more subtle. It was his subtlety that deceived Eve, not the snakes. It was Eve's. And it's not a big deal. You can believe it was a serpent walking up on its legs talking, if that makes you happy. But too often, believers have focused on this snake that's walking around than on what happened. Now, if I'm, you know, you can make a parrot speak. I get, is it a parrot that'll speak? Well, whatever bird will speak. It doesn't know what it's saying. So did he speak through? I don't know. But it was the serpent, and all the scriptures referred to the serpent as Satan, who was more subtle than any beast of the field, anything in the field. And I believe that was Satan. Anyway, which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He will ask you, Yea, did Jesus really become poor so you could be rich? Yea, did God really say everybody should be healed? Did Jesus really become a curse for you? So you have the blessing? By his stripes you were healed. Does that mean I'm already healed? And I don't have to beg Jesus to heal me because I'm already healed? He'll ask you, yea, hath God said this? Put the verse back up, please. And the woman said, so now she's speaking to Satan. I believe it was the angel of, anyway. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Next. She's good here. But of the tree, fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest she, you die. She added to it. She was misinformed somewhere. She may have dreamed it up. But Adam was to give her the instructions. And she added to it. Now remember, Adam was right there with her. He was not deceived. She was. So now she's talking and she's saying this. The minute you quote scripture wrong, or you don't really believe it, and you're just peddling real fast, just spouting stuff off, Satan knows where it's coming from. Because it will have, and I've heard it, and I've caught myself, there will be just a little thing wrong with what you're saying. And he knows. Next verse. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. Again, this is Satan talking. Now he is saying you won't die. He's contradicting God, direct um, contradiction, saying God isn't truth. And he says, for God knows that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, knowing good and evil, from what I've heard teaching on that, that was when they ate, they had a conscience. They didn't know evil before that. Everything was good. Everything was good. Everything was good. So he's arguing. He's saying, God knows this is going to happen. Basically, God's holding out on you. People think God owes them something. 
God owes us nothing. Zero. And the only reason we have anything is because of Jesus and what he's done for us. We can't make ourselves good enough. In the natural, we're not good enough. In the natural, we can't do enough. But through Jesus, all things are possible. It's because of Jesus. God's not holding out on us, but he doesn't owe us anything. And that's important because we sometimes get over into that, well, this is what I've all done. I've confessed the word, I've prayed, I've read the Bible, I speak the word, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, look at me, this is what I've done. And two things happen. I've done all this, so look at me, I'm a great example of a Christian. And also, that underlying thought of God, look at me, look what I've done. Look how great I am. I've done all this stuff. This is what I do all the time. God, you owe me. Now, we don't want to say, God, you owe me. But really, that's what we're doing. God owes us nothing. Adam voluntarily disobeyed and became a dead spirit alive to Satan. And he deserved hell. And you and I deserved hell. And that's where we would be going if it wasn't for Jesus. And we've got to stop that pride. We've got to stop it. We've got to stop it. Next verse. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, we're told, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, not unto stuff. Yeah. Saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired. This talks about in 1 John, about, I don't know, chapter 4 or something, or maybe 3, about the lust of the eye, etc. This is what she did. Jesus went through all these temptations. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now here's the thing. She said, we may not touch or eat. She picked the fruit, she touched it, and she didn't die. So why not eat? I'm still alive. I guess God lied to me. I spoke the word 555 times. I'm still sick. Look at that. God must have lied to me. Oh, I spoke the word 349 times and I'm healed. Well, guess what? I am my healer. She took it. So Adam, standing there watching this and giving him credit, he saw her pick it. He heard her say, you can't touch or eat. Why didn't he correct her? I don't know. Bible doesn't tell me. But I believe he saw her hold that fruit. And when she didn't die, did they think the death, maybe Adam and Eve thought it would be physical death. They didn't even know what death was. They had never seen anything die. How do they know? It's a matter of believing what God said, whether you see it or not. He said it. That should settle it for you. But anyway, so Adam sees her holding this fruit, and she didn't die. She's still standing there. And then she eats, and she's still standing there. So she gives to him. Women, be very aware of what you're feeding your husband. And I'm not talking about food. Well, that too. You don't want to poison him. But I'm not talking about food because sometimes that's rare in our house. I, I'm very aware of what I feed my husband. I make sure I'm not poisoning him. It's, so I just don't cook. It just solves the problem. And so he ate. Why didn't he slap it out of her hand? Why didn't he? Why, I, the Bible doesn't tell me. But I do know, I believe, he was so enamored with his wife, which men you should be, that he didn't want to lose her. But don't be so enamored that you swallow poison. 
And actually, Jane, Carolyn's mom, told us this interesting story of this woman whose husband wanted to get rid of her because she was having an affair with the best friend and started, she smoked and was feeding her cyanide through the cigarettes. I mean, beware. Oh, yeah, that was an interesting story. <laughs> we have lots of stories. Anyway, next verse. And when the woman saw the tree was good and gave her husband and he did eat. Next. So now maybe women have a harder job than men. I'm not sure. I think it's rather equal. And the eyes of them both were open. You see, her eyes didn't seem to be open until his were open. And they knew they were naked. They were naked. The end of uh, chapter 1, it says they were naked. Or was it chapter? It doesn't matter. Whatever chapter it was, 1 or 2. And they weren't ashamed. They didn't have clothes as we saw last week. So they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. People realize they need God. They need Jesus. But they're covering it up with works, money, possessions, various religions, various theories, various whatevers it is. They are covering it up. Next verse. And they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. Next verse. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. Today, Holy Spirit is drawing everybody. Because unless you're drawn, you don't come to God. But often they hear his voice and they become afraid because they don't want to admit they need Jesus. They cover it up with false religion, with works, whatever it might be. And so they're hiding in this supposed success. Next verse. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou should eat? They realize they evil, the knowledge of good and evil. They saw it as evil. Next. And the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. God, what kind of woman is this you gave me? Come on, God, smarten up. I thought you brought her to me and now look at what happened. Well, he should have done something before that happened. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And she should have checked with her husband. Is this really what God said? Next. And the Lord God said, Unto the serpent. Unto the serpent. I believe he was speaking to Lucifer at this point. Not Satan yet, but Lucifer. Because you have done this, you're cursed above all cattle. You see, the angels were above the cattle. They are under man. We see that in Hebrews. There's God, there's man, the angels, the animals. That's why I believe it was Satan talking to her directly. But whether it was through a snake or whatever, it doesn't matter. Because here he's saying to the serpent, and you go, I've got all these other scriptures that every time it refers to serpent, it's referring to Satan. Because you have done this, and that's when he fell. Satan, when iniquity was found in you. And I believe that's where iniquity was found. Not him rebelling in heaven. But whatever. It doesn't have anything to do with our salvation, perhaps. But it does because I just am not comfortable with God putting Satan, who rebelled, if Satan rebelled against him, and all these fallen angels, putting them deliberately, letting them be in the garden with his man to tempt him. That is just not love. That is just not right. Would you do that to your children? Would you do that to your wife? Anybody. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't go put them in a lion's den and see if they know how to act their authority. So anyway, so this, you're cursed above all cattle. This is where angels fell. 
I believe, Satan fell. And every beast of the field upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now I know it's talking about belly, and this is again where they get the idea of a snake. But the dust aspect, snakes don't eat dust. Dust shall eat. Do snakes eat dust? No. Go to Matthew. We'll go back to Genesis, but go to Matthew 10, 14. Matthew 10, 14. And then we'll go back to Genesis. Well, let's just finish. It's okay. You've got Genesis there. Let's just finish it. We'll go then. Next verse. Or is that the end of it? No, it isn't. Let's go. 15. And I will put enmity. Now again, he's speaking. If it's a snake, a literal snake, he's putting enmity between the woman and thy seed. That's not right. So we know he's talking to Satan here. Because enmity between thy seed and her seed, and who was her seed? Jesus. What's well, got nothing to do with the snake? Yeah. Talking to Satan here. And her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The head, it's referring to Rosh. Satan's authority, because Satan, we saw, took man's authority through Jesus. Jesus got it back. You see, Jesus will never give the authority away. Amen. You could get under pressure and give your authority away, but it'll never be lost because Jesus got it. Yeah. And in the name of Jesus, he said, in my name, you go. Yeah. In his name, we're releasing that authority. He's talking to Satan through this whole thing. I believe that's where Satan fell. Yeah. Lucifer fell. God didn't put him in the garden as a fallen angel to deliberately tempt and test Eve. Why was that tree in the garden? God, today, we have a choice. You see, throughout the whole word, God gives a choice. God did not want a robot. He wanted us to serve him with our will, joyfully. Joyfully serve him. It, it's, it's, I used to be envious of people that had a music talent, that could sing and play and, and just worship God and make music to him. But our voice is music to him doesn't have to be a melody. David and I just were not gifted that way, and our children's voices aren't gifted. Well, the boys aren't gifted that way. But we can sure praise God. We can praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now they were severed from the life of God by eating that tree that fruit they lost hope their image changed they no longer saw themselves as children of God whom you obey you become servants to at that moment they became Satan's servants you want to know why there's so much crazy stuff today they're Satan's servants they're denying God. They're rejecting God. And the more you reject God, the crazier you're going to be and the more horrendous stuff there's going to be out there. But we are not to fear. We are not children of the night. We're children of the light. And I am at a place. I really don't care what you think of me. I don't care what my children or David thinks of me. What's totally important is what my Heavenly Father says about me. Amen. The rest is like the cherry on top. That's what's important. When that's important to you, you will now hear and the voice of Holy Spirit, be led by him, and you'll be able to walk in love. 
that love will be different and then you will be able to minister to people because of that love, not trying to impress them to get you to like me. If I do something to try and impress you or get you to like me, which is what the whole problem with, with that whole thing in the garden, if we do that, we're sunk because we're in pride. And we feel inferior that Jesus isn't enough. And he's always, always, always enough. So now I told you we were going to go to Matthew 10, 14. I wanted you to see that about the dust. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. They're rejecting your message. Who rejects your message? Satan. He's to crawl in the dust. You're to shake that dust off your feet. He's under your feet. Shake it off. Just shake it off. Jesus told him to shake it off. When you do that, it's a testimony against them. When you come in the name of Jesus and you, Satan, people don't receive you because Satan's trying to work through them to get to you, shake it off. It reminds him of what God spoke to him in the garden what Jesus did to him in the pit of hell. Shake it off. Doesn't matter what you say about me. I believe this. If someone comes to me with criticism, I look at it and I check it out. Are they right? And it shouldn't really be criticism, but correction. But check it out. Be wise. People should be able to tell you something. And check it out. Be wise. Check it out. And if they're right, change with the power of Holy Spirit. If they're not right, shake it off. Go forward. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Remember, whatever comes against you, John 8, 44, we don't have to look at this, but Jesus says Satan is a liar, and he was a liar from the very beginning. 2 Corinthians 11, 14, it says Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. He disguises himself as an angel of light. So if an angel or anybody else comes and preaches to you a different gospel, where Jesus did it all for you, where it's Jesus only, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. You may stand, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.